program today tweeting this. He said, my first order as president was to renovate and modernize our nuclear arsenal. Is it now far stronger and more powerful than ever before? Hopefully, we will never have to use this power, obviously, but there will never be a time that we are not the most powerful nation in the world. Is this an accurate read, though, on our nuclear arsenal? Here to discuss, Rebecca Grant, president of IRIS Independent Research and a former secretary of the Air Force official, and Colonel John Venable, a senior research fellow at the Heritage Foundation and a former commander in the Air Force. John, I'll start with you. Uh, we make this grand assumption that everything's great in terms of our nuclear capability, but this stuff was all built and put together decades and decades and decades ago. Are we ready to go on that front? Is our nuclear capability in great shape? Well, Jerry, it's a great question. Our equipment is old, but it is well kept. Um, we need to update it eventually, but right now, if you're talking about a, a power that has less than 15 nuclear weapons with a country like ours that has a triad that is land-based missiles, um, air, uh, air power uh, delivered vehicles and, uh, and munitions, as well as SLBMs, it's a completely different game. We would counter their uh, blows with um, our uh, Aegis cruisers and THAAD, and the chances of them being successful would be minimal, and the consequences would be grave for the North Koreans. No kidding. Uh, Rebecca, I want to turn to you for a second. Uh, ben Rhodes, a former advisor to Obama, tweeted this in response to what the president had to say. He said, boasting about the size of our nuclear arsenal and sending aides out to demand we rally around the leader is chilling, and it's only month seven. He has big questions about uh, whether we are in good shape on that score. What is your read? Well, Jerry, I'm really not surprised that Ben Rhodes doesn't like what he's hearing from Donald Trump, but I read those tweets very differently. What I hear is Trump underscoring how effective our deterrent really is. We have the B-2 and B-52 bombers. We have the submarine leg of that triad. And, of course, we have our own fully operational, fully tested Minutemen in the silos as well. So Trump is just reminding North Korea that they will never catch us when it comes to being a nuclear power. We also also have something that we've never had before, and that is an effective, reliable, layered missile defense. That's a first, real different from the Cold War. You know, I, I was looking at the numbers on the nuclear warheads. You know, we have 6,800, only uh, the Russians have more than that, some 7,000. But 2,800 of these are retired, 4,000 are stockpiled, only 1,800 are deployed. I, I suppose you only need one nuclear warhead, right? But what do you make of that, John, when you look at those numbers? Is that concerning in any way? Are, are, you, are you totally confident in our nuclear capabilities? Yeah, I, I will say this, that the, our uh, SLBM capability and our land-based missiles are extraordinary, but the way we would go about doing this if we had to respond in a nuclear sense would be, very likely be a pinpoint attack using a B-2 or a, a defensive uh, DCA aircraft, dual capable aircraft. They wouldn't be able to see a B-2 coming in. It would be able to, to lay down the munition very effectively. We would hope that we uh, could do other um, operations, cyber and, and other covert measures to take them out before they got to that point, certainly. But our ability to back up our words, as Secretary Mattis and the President have said, is extraordinary. Right. It's, uh, it's a big debate there. Guys, thanks so much for being on the show tonight. Appreciate your time. And why rising tensions with North Korea may take a big bite out of your 401k. We'll have the details coming up.